Welcome to Impact the World, a podcast from West Park Baptist Church in Knoxville, Tennessee. This is where we discuss topics related to how we can all love God, love people, and impact the world. Here's your host, Tara Hayes. I am your host, Tara Hayes, and we are in the middle, well, we're coming to the end of a series that we have called We Are West Park. And um, a couple weeks ago, we talked about the doctrinal statement of West Park, and we've also discussed covenant membership and what that looks like. And today, I have the distinct pleasure of sitting down with someone I consider to be a friend, Paul Waymeyer. Hey, Paul. Hello. How you doing? I'm good. Thanks for uh, thanks for having me today. Well, I'm I'm excited to have you here. Paul is. I'll let him give his official title, but he, Paul is part of our elder team, and we're gonna have a discussion about elders. I think a, you know some people may not understand what are elders, what do they do, why do we have elders, and we're gonna kind of touch on some of those things. But give us your official title. Well, uh, recently uh, I've been. Uh, named uh, the chairman of the elders so i'm uh, uh i'm their leader which way did they go <laughs> oh. that's that's uh you know to try to keep us organized and on task but that's uh, on the whole we're a we're a group of uh, 13 men with uh we're co-equals uh, and we work together to uh, guide and direct as we're led by christ uh west what we do here at west park so well it's exciting so um is that how you would describe, well, how would you describe the role of the elder to our church family? Well, I think the most important thing that I would say about the role of elder is that it's not a role that, that West Park has defined. It's a role that Scripture defines. And so um, you look in Timothy, you look in uh, Peter, uh, there are the epistles, and you see the description of what the role is. And, and ultimately it is... It is an overseer uh, of what God has brought together in a local church. And that's what our goal is, is to oversee the flock, the people that, that, that God has called, that Christ has won, that attend here at West Park. And so uh, it doesn't, we're not, when I, when I say we're not special, we're, <laughs> we're, we're, we are special in the sense that God has um, revealed to others not just us, but to others, uh, that uh, we have certain giftings to teach, mm-hmm. uh, to to um, encourage, you know, and to have a both a family structure in life, but also a life uh, that demonstrates the gospel at work. But it's not, um, you know, we, we we put our pants on one leg at a time. You're just normal people, and, like and, the rest. Of yep, us. doing our doing our best to to follow God in our own lives, but mm. also then to lead others in following Him as well. Yeah, I know. Um, in January, I'm going to sit down with James Lynch and talk about deacons, and I think some people would say, "Well, so what's the difference? What would be the big difference between?" And I know we've talked about this before, but if you're new, what would be the big difference between wh- what deacons do and what elders do? Okay. Well, a lot of what you see in the way we interact with church members is probably going to be very similar, okay? Uh, because an elder has a heart to shepherd and care mm-hmm. for the flock. And deacons, uh, their key function is caring for uh, and meeting the, the typically the tam- tangible needs, but really the needs of the flock, right? Uh, the real difference, uh, as Scripture describes it, is that elders have an authority that's not their own, but it yeah. is given to them by God to lead the church, which means sometimes uh, they they make decisions for the church, and some may look at that decision and say, well, I don't know how I feel about that. Well, someone has to make it, and the Lord has appointed elders to right. do that, that role. Deacons don't have that function. Yeah. The other thing I would say is that that deacons, uh, the focus of their ministry to the church is a service ministry. Yeah. Uh, now, ours is a service ministry too, but theirs, theirs is a, a, a visibly, a tangibly um, recognizable ministry. Yeah. Uh, whereas elders, uh, certainly you will see us up and about doing things, and you may even see us working with deacons to do tangible right. things. But that's not necessarily the focus of the role of our ministry. Yeah. That, that comes from the book of Acts where um, the apostles set 
uh, worked with the with the local assembly to set apart men who who met a criteria. Right? They were they were above reproach. They met the 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 uh, scriptural uh, components of of a lifestyle of following Christ. But they set them apart for the purpose of providing for the women uh, mm-hmm. and the and the and to to bridge some divides that had had popped yeah. up in the church. Yeah. Yeah, so those are just some some key differences. There's also a legal difference too. Uh, uh, we we have the responsibility. Every every organization uh, that is registered with the state of Tennessee has certain legal obligations, mm. and the elders serve that function. But that's not a biblical one. That's yeah. just a matter. Somebody has to do it. So it's kind of an administrative role within the body. That's right. Yeah. That's right. So. Um, what? How do you see, or how do the elders carry out their duties then to the body of Christ? Like, because I know the scope of your work is broad. Like you've said, there's a lot of different ways that you serve. So, how do you carry that out amongst the the people in the church? Well, the reality is, is we we couldn't, we can't meet as you know, thirteen men um, every time something happens, and so. Right. And we couldn't complete very much as 13 men having meetings all the time. So we have broken up into teams, and, and we have several. But um, as you've discussed in your podcast recently, we have, uh, you know, we had a team that worked on the doctrinal statement. Uh, we have a team that works, uh, their focus is shepherding, and that includes both new people coming in, so mm-hmm. our, our membership and connect uh, class as part of the, the oversight is with that shepherding team. We also have folks who, frankly, you know, they, they maybe they have a, have reasons, but they haven't been here for a while. Yeah. And we spend a lot of time chasing the sheep, so to speak. <laughs> and that's not that it's not to be judgmental in any way. But the reality is, is we can't effectively lead people if we don't know who we're leading. Right. And we don't know um, what's going on with their lives, and so uh, that that shepherding team does a lot of work. James Lynch and Don Lewis are are very active in that, and their team works really hard to to stay on top of those things. So we we uh, we have a meeting once a month where we we focus on those issues, yeah. uh, and then and then the all the other things. <laughs> Uh, that we do um, other duties as assigned. Yeah, thinking through <laughs> things like, um, you know, the uh, obviously Pastor Sam uh, has an idea of what he wants the uh, teaching ministry to look like uh, Sunday to Sunday, but we are we, we stay involved and 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 uh, participate in that and um, you know how we want the teaching ministry to look like. That's yeah. one of the really probably that's that's the most fundamental distinction between really deacons and elders is that they have to have the ability to teach. So part of our role is is coming alongside Pastor Sam as he as he leads the church as lead pastor and assist in, in right. doing those things. I kind of think of elders um, as directional mm-hmm. and they are kind of pointing the church and the body and the pastor through the direction of the Lord, obviously, in the direction that the church is going, and and the and the deacons and the and everybody else are kind of helping carry that out. But yeah. that's um, kind of your role. And uh, just to go back to the shepherding part, I think that is a really important component. Mm-hmm. And I think um, for people to understand that really is the heart of the elders to see people growing and connected to the body and. Um, being, you know, living a vital life in church community. I think, you know, um, just culturally, I, I'll speak for myself. I grew up in a community where, you know, most people went to church. Uh, I'll put that in quotes because went meant a lot of different things. <laughs> it could mean uh, Thanksgiving or, excuse me, uh, Easter and Christmas. It might mean, you know, once a month. It, it might mean every time the doors are open. But, it, you know, that kind of floats around. And what we want for folks that come to come to West Park and, and engage with West Park as a covenant member is to recognize that uh, what we've been called to is is lifestyle Christianity. Right. Not just having your name on a roll somewhere, not just um, participating seasonally, but really living and doing life together with each and with each other. And uh, so, you know, part of the reason we set a meeting aside a month to do shepherding uh, is because 
it requires that in a church of yeah. our size. You know, we have to know who's here. We have to find out why they're not. It, it may be that they need um, the body to be serving them in some way. Yeah. But if we don't, if we don't actively reach out and find out what's going on, we can't effectively meet their need. And you know, that's that's the real distinction that the church is supposed to have is that they they know you by the way you love, but it's love for one another and first to mm -hmm. the community of faith, right? right? So so the way we love each other when we're in need, the way we love each other when we need. Um, Difficult conversations. Yeah. You know, all of those things are are a are a touch point for people to see that Christ is at work here. So yeah, well, I think <laughs> I partially bring that up because, like, if, if if an elder is seeking you out, it's because they care about you. <laughs> you know, and just to 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 make sure that you're okay and and to keep you connected to the body. And one thing I can't ask for people. I mean, I'm just going to take a moment of personal privilege here. <laughs> Yeah, please answer your phone or respond to your text. Even if it's simply things are going great, I can't talk right now. Yeah. Because one of the one of the biggest challenges in our, you know, just we we're more connected than we've ever been and we're also less connected yeah. than we've ever been. Uh, the ways we can get in touch with one another are amazing. Yeah. But our willingness to actually be connected <laughs> is is a different story. And yeah. so just encourage people that when you get one of those calls, even if it's from a number you don't recognize, uh, you know, listen to the voicemail. Yeah. And uh, and re and, and respond in some way. Yeah. Now that will help us help you. you yeah. Know? So. Well, and I and I know that is the heart, um, the the desire of all the elders that I know is to make sure that the flock that you are helping to shepherd is healthy and good and. And if you need help, to, that, that you're there to help and, and to lead in other ways. So so let's talk a little bit about your duties as the chairman. And talk, let's talk about, too, um, when, you, um, when you hit on that, what kind of teams that you have and the elders. Right. So, um, you know, we, we have, I believe there are half a dozen um, if I'm thinking correctly, and I should have written this down, Tara, before I came, but uh, we have a half a dozen teams. Uh, the shepherding team is, is probably our most active team because it's something we're doing all the time. Our documents team uh, is is another team we have, and that they, they were they were active in the the uh, doctrinal statement. We have a worship team that that um, that works together to think through what worship looks like and, mm. and works with Doug, obviously. Um, uh, as our worship pastor, he has um, he has day to day responsibility, but there is a team that's praying over that and yeah. thinking through that. Um, we have a strategic team that is thinking about next things, whether that's uh, facilities or it might be it might be um, uh, you know the the path we're going to take with particular ministries. So we have that strategic strategic team, uh, and those are those are the generally the standing the standing teams <clears throat> then we have uh, the, ex the executive team and that would of course uh, be myself and the secretary and the vice chair um, uh, uh, Damon Falconeer is our secretary and our vice chair is Don Lewis so okay. so we um, we work together to try to make sure that one that there's some care for one another yeah. uh, among the among the group and that we are not just um, not just that we can all get together and have a coffee and slap each other on the back, <laughs> but also that we're you know we're sharpening one another, right? right? Because the reality is is we we uh, we deal with the same flesh that <laughs> everyone else does, and so um, we we work to do that. Uh, and obviously with with Pastor Sam and and with the staff pastors, we work with them too to 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 stay on top of of um, you know things that we're doing here in the body. Uh, so that, that would kind of generally describe the teams. Um, and then, I'm sorry, I slipped uh, my mind with the your, second part of the question. Your position as chairman uh, of... Yeah, well, that that's a nice big title <laughs> I, uh, that really uh, only means that I'm responsible for trying to keep us um, on task. Anytime you get uh, a group of anyone together, but particularly, you know, 13 men who are... Who are in the middle of their careers, mm -hmm. or if they have reached the area of retirement, they still have 
Um, there, there are many other places they're right. serving. They're here. all very and, active. Yeah, their families, and so my my job is to um, is to help prioritize what we're going to bring in any particular meeting, and to keep us on the task of that, hmm. and to not um, and to not over. Um, to not become just a debate club right. where we get nothing done, right? And that that has not been a problem since I've been on the elders. But, but you know, anytime you have quote committees, I think I think that's a no no <laughs> word with Pastor Sam. But anytime yeah. you have you know groups like that, it's easy to get together and talk a problem, but not actually get anything kind of solution. done. And yeah. so, my job as chair is to keep us on that path, and to sometimes also just say, you know, yeah, that's a great idea, and we should talk about that, but we're not. We're not going to take that up because it's going to be to the detriment of something we're trying to get right. done today. Yeah. So that's so it's it's kind of like just wrangling and hurting. Yeah, yeah. I guess I guess <laughs> for growing a spiritual up on a, purpose. <laughs> growing up on a livestock farm was helpful. With I was going to say, yeah, that you got a lot of practice prior. Well, I mean, because I can only imagine again a church our size and um, with all of the different ministries and all of that. There's a lot to be discussed. Um, especially as you're in a, a building project and, you know, I mean, there's just a lot of levels. So the, the really good thing about the team that we have, and, and I think, um, you know, obviously those meetings aren't open to the public, but <laughs> I think I can at least pull the curtain back a little bit and say that um, I have never been in a meeting with, uh, with any man that God has placed on our team where we have, um, we have not uh, been able to um, find unity. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, and by that, I don't mean unanimity, uh, although most of the things we do are unanimous. Yeah. Uh, but by that, I, but by that, I mean, you know, we, we, we talk through with the idea and a heart of what is God's will in a particular issue, whatever that issue happens to be. We talk it through and we have always uh, met a place where there was unity around a decision to be made. And so I, I you know, I think that's a that's a sign that that the Lord is in what's being done. Mm, yeah. Because um, you know, anytime you get entrepreneurial folks and <laughs> folks with professional degrees and folks that are in church ministry and folks that are not in church ministry, and <laughs> you know, we're we we're, we're all I wouldn't I wouldn't say we're all strong willed, but we all have we all come with experience in right. leadership in other places. Yeah. And and so it's it would be easy to. Um, not you know want well, to have it our I way. I think that this way is the best way. That's right. Yeah. But we have always, um, since I've served on on the board, and I and I uh, you know the proto elders before that, I think have always recognized the importance and and made it a goal to really listen to what God's doing and yeah. try to chase that as opposed to uh, any particular way we might prefer. Yeah. Well, I know I have great respect for our elders. I know they put in. A lot of time, um, and you know you're not being paid, <laughs> but um, it, it's a great responsibility to it, to help you know direct the church. Well, I want to be. Uh, we there's a reward in it, All right? You know, um, and I don't I don't say that to say that's why we do it, but um, you know it's. It's amazing to see the Lord working in lives of people, and yeah. we and we get up close and personal in that. Now, sometimes it it can be, you know, um, it can be, uh, you know, we weep too, right? Yeah. I mean, there's there's stuff that that we that we deal with that that might cause us to weep, but we also get to rejoice with people, yeah. and and um, and we rejoice obviously at the at what we see God doing here. Yeah. And so it's definitely a reward, uh, even, even makes the difficult days uh, well worth it. Yeah, yeah, that's great. So is there um, a particular way that you interact with church staff? I mean, do you, um, is there a, a component to that? Well, I can, I'll speak for myself. I won't, I, I won't speak to every man. First of all, um, you know, uh, Pastor Sam is 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 a co. He's a co elder. He's a right. he um, and he is a co equal on our team. And so um, you know, just in some of the ro different roles I have, I know that if I if I um, feel like I need the assistance of staff or feel like I need 
to to engage with the staff in some way. I always try to channel that through him because, in addition to his role he, as lead pastor, is he is the he's the executive head of our church, and uh, I think it's always important to keep that in mind so that I don't we don't send the staff running ten different ways, <laughs> right? Uh, but we the staff appreciate that. <laughs> but I but I think uh, you know generally speaking, anytime I've ever needed a particular thing, I've I've try to keep Sam, Pastor Sam in the loop, but then I, I go and, and I just ask the person and I say, hey, listen, I'm not your boss. <laughs> so so if there's a reason you have any hesitancy about what I'm asking you to do, make sure it's okay with Sam, yeah. you know, because it's uh, Pastor Sam, I'm sorry. Because <laughs> it's it's important that, that we as elders, you know, bec- even though we have an oversight role, there's also the need for order and structure in the way the church operates from day mm. to day. And so, um, you know, we, we need to be the ears to hear people, and we need to speak truth to people. Sometimes people need to hear that. Mm. But we're not uh, 13 lead pastors running around. <laughs> we have one yeah. lead pastor. So. Right. Yeah. Um, I, th- I think it would be great for people to know um, how they could reach the elders, how they would know who the elders are. I will say, um, in fact, I just had a conversation today about this, that we will be in um, coming up soon. I won't say for sure because <laughs> it's on the to-do list. We are going to be putting our elders online so that people will be able to easily access on the website. Who are our elders? Mm-hmm. And to see that. Um, but in the meantime, in the Welcome Center, Front Lobby, and the Hub, there are booklets that have pictures of all of the elders and a bio. If if you're ever curious, who are our elders? Um, those are always available to pick up. But I know that you guys are very open to people approaching you with questions or concerns or any of that. How would how would someone do that? Okay, so I the fir- first of all, I think you should be comfortable um, just walking up to any one of us, and I. I have a roster here, so I'll just mm. tell you who they are. Yes, please name um, them. Pastor Cage, Al Cage, uh, Pastor Chris Reed, uh, and I'm going to call us all pastor because, frankly, the title that goes that goes with all of us, whether we're on staff or not, Pastor Falconer, Damon Falconer, mm. Pastor Don Lewis, Pastor Doug Bromley, Pastor Fred Blevins, Pastor James Lynch, Pastor Jeff Wiggs, Pastor Joe Cappell. Pastor Neil R. Wood, Pastor uh, Sam Polson, mm. Pastor Tony Sims. So, um, and I know that that word, it, it's a little hard for me to say sometimes because <laughs> I'm not used to being called that. But the reality is, is that elder is, a, is synonymous right. with pastor. And so uh, the office of pastor has been filled by these men here at West Park. Uh, and you can walk up to any of them now. If you're walking up to them expecting a decision, well, they, we, none of us have the authority right. to make decisions without the rest of us, right? We're a team of mm-hmm. elders. Uh, there, we're a plurality, uh, a, a group of men. Uh, and so uh, you, may, you may not always get an immediate answer. Yes. And when you do get an answer, it may not come from the person you spoke with. Uh, because we we communicate, we try to communicate in a unified way, uh, as opposed to having um, various voices with uh, without the input of all of the elders. So, yeah. um, so as far as contacting us, if you have a if you have a need, uh, we traditionally have had the contact point be the chairman. Uh, and that's the person often, if you, particularly if you want something in writing, you're going to get something from. So uh, my email address, I'm happy to give. Um, just ask that you be uh, gracious to understand <laughs> that I have several of these. But uh, <laughs> but my email address. You need to understand, if you don't know um, Paul Waymeyer, he is an attorney at law. <laughs> and as I joke with him, with lots of words. <laughs> that's right. That's right. And as many email addresses. <laughs> uh, but my email address is pwaymeyer at westparkbaptist.org. And that's P-W-E-H, like Harry, M like Mary, E-I-E-R 
at westparkbaptist.org. And if you have a question or if you have a concern or if you have a need, uh, we would love to hear from you uh, and, 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 commun- and we'll communicate in an appropriate way. That would be awesome. I'll include that in the show notes. So if people want to email you, they can easily click on the link and, and send you a message. So, um, yeah, I think, I think it is important for the congregation to understand the role of the elders and who our elders are because they are responsible, like we've talked about, for the direction of the church and how the Lord is leading us as a body. So um, do you have any um, kind of parting thoughts on how the congregation and elders can or should work together to advance our mission? Yeah, I think, you know, uh, maybe maybe three points, uh, I would say. Are you going to alliterate them? No, I'm not. Okay, that's all uh, right. Uh, the, fir- the first thing I would say is, um, you know, it, as elders, we desire your good and your growth. Mm. And so when you, when you see change, and change inevitably comes, uh, we're not changing things just because uh, we thought, oh, that'd be a great idea to change that. Believe me, uh, that email address I just gave you'd be a whole lot less active <laughs> if uh, if if uh, we didn't change anything. But sometimes, you know, as we as we look at things, we think change is appropriate. Right. Uh, we think that there might be a new or a better way, not to not not that there's a new or better gospel, <laughs> but a new or better way to deliver that right. to folks that particularly as our community changes. Yeah. And so uh, I hope hope people understand that. that the, uh, the, the second thing I guess I would point out is we, we as we want to see you grow in the Lord, uh, we want you to lean in to being a covenant member here. Mm-hmm. And by that I mean it's, uh, it, leaning into the fact that we want to know what's going on in your life uh, and we want you to we want you to want us to know right and to be there with us and and we're here to counsel you and guide you. Uh, we're but we're also, and we're here to encourage you, uh, and we're here to, um, you know, I weep with you and rejoice with you. Mm. And if folks, if you know, if, if you're coming here and you're not, you don't feel like that that that's happening. Um, one, please reach out to us. We're we're trying to reach out to folks, but you know, uh, not to say that we couldn't do it better or or more often, right? So we encourage folks to to try to connect with us, but also. You know, as as you know people in your community, that's part of West Park, your subset <laughs> community within West Park, you know, um, communicate with us when you see and know things that are going on. And we're we're happy to lean in and then communicate back. And obviously we're, we're trying and want to be proactive yeah. in that way. I guess the last thing I would say is as as you grow in the knowledge and the, and the grace of the Lord and, and your your. Um, Hopefully flourishing, but at, but at a minimum growing uh, here. Part of that then begun is is to help you prepare to live out the gospel outside of West Park. Mm. Yeah. So it's it's really wonderful that you when you come here and you are edified, you're built up in the Word. We 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 couldn't ask for better uh, a better pulpit ministry than what we have here. Yeah. Uh, and and. Um, Setting aside at least my equipping class, I think you're, everyone's being equipped here. Okay? Your class is fantastic. But but I think what we want you to do is to do something with that. Yeah. And so uh, just encourage you to find ways, and we're we are we are growing ways here. Um, you know, Cedar Brook now is is uh, has been around for is it six years? Six or seven, yeah. Yeah, uh, and and that ministry uh, offers. Uh, multiple ways that right. you can impact people who don't know Christ or if they do know Christ it's a very immature knowledge right and you can get to know them and and frankly um, the relationship piece both inside the church but also building relationships with folks outside the church is critical to making disciples yeah. if we don't if we're not doing that, then we're not meeting our mission, and um, and so we want to equip you to do that, and then give you avenues to do that. Yeah. And I encourage you if you don't know an avenue, you need to get you need to talk with an elder, 
uh, or talk with your uh, community group leader. But uh, come find me if you don't. I've got plenty of places <laughs> for, say, to put you to work. You're you're quickly becoming like Pastor Al because if you talk to Pastor Al Cage, he'll plug you in yeah. quickly. But yeah. there are a lot of opportunities through Cedar Brook and and many ministries here to to get plugged in. And and the thing is, the really great thing is, is you don't really how do I say this? There are a few things we do here where we may ask you to have some training. Yeah. to be you know equipped for special types of ministry but for the most part most of the service things that we do for our community to proclaim Christ require you to have a story about how Christ <laughs> redeemed you yes and be willing to give a little bit of time to share that with somebody else and if you can do those things we, we've got your plenty of places to plug <laughs> in so. That's right well I really appreciate um, you taking the time to sit down with me today and to discuss the elders and kind of their role in the church and to get to know them better. And um, I know it's your desire, my desire, that the congregation as a whole would better know the elders in return. Um, So I really appreciate your time today, Paul. Well, 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 thanks for having me, and uh, I look forward to hearing from folks about (laughs) their questions, uh, but also... Uh, really do want to know how we can how we can serve you better. So just just look forward to hearing from folks. Well, thank you, and thanks for taking time to listen to our episode today. And we look forward to hearing from you all and seeing you soon. Thank you for listening to Impact the World. To find out more about West Park Baptist Church in Knoxville, Tennessee, visit westparkbaptist.org.